Awo sange na tine mavula nlela. Ema kaa, ema tolope na setkom plus takona. Gupina gupi la pubuge la kona msaga watu wako lomba mbili. SAPC 1 mzansi for show. Sik patela gilutile lulako, ilunge lulako. It's your right. Lulugle tela getinza batiba tseng, letse matseni. Minege ingisi mpio ngoane. Kumbula guti na unga ba ingenye lulutile lulu. Ngetugu shari lulutu yungu 011-714-6918. Numage gu 011-714-6919. Mwapinza tume nafutu na email gu consumer at sapc.co.za. Sa pinza tfolaga nafutu gu Facebook na gu Twitter. Ranzige leli, lunge lulako. Alright, now if you've ever in your life bought anything through an account instead of cash, chances are your name is among those listed in the credit bureaus. How is that so, you may ask? Well, the National Credit Act makes it very compulsory that each time you buy on credit, you must be listed. Well, that may sound unfair, especially in view of the perception that being listed seems like a punishment reserved for those consumers who don't pay their debts. Well, in today's show, we look at how consumers can use credit bureaus to their advantage. Yeboge mbugeli, umangabe uge watsea ngeskule tempile niyako, kusene gwende ya gutilka malako ligu uma credit bureaus. Logo ya gungu mtsee tfugu National Credit Act. Kepage logo ge aku usho kukutsi iso upaliwe, heti nga tine timnyama. Kuba ku credit bureau, kunga kusebende la ngendele la lisi manga mbugeli. Any is in the Cocos of Simsons of Africa, the second appears Guazo. Good thing and good thing is in the Gala. There's no talking by Inda with the Saudis and Mali. A machine, a puma, a puro, a kangala band of a funa good tenga. Quarter buzz about pelling this team is a good style and gleaming. This is the diesel. In the city Labanese Yoga, Mslawa Sula Gusaula, Igamala, who is far away, what is in Yamas as a credit bureau. Now, like when it's a shop, maybe we shall ask us to see if it's when back for a credit bureau. Maybe if you have too much debt, yeah, that's when you become in a. Where that's when you become blacklisted, maybe. I'm going to abandon my years in credit bureau. Your loan will be cancelled a good. We're going to knock bank lock, but I'm going to come abo and fill a good yo. They should avoid a clothing shops. These are the ones that are worst. Because you can owe a clothing shop 2,000. They take you there. You owe the big banks 500,000. They help you to pay. <laughs> instead of <laughs> taking you to credit bureau. <laughs> the thing that's really bad about it is the fact that some employers still check whether you're credit listed or not, regardless of the fact that you're not doing a finance-related job, which is terrible. I mean, and that needs to really, really change. credit <laughs> bureau Ingabalum ting, a capolanga nanga machala. Taisi tolosi kachua, kulapo ubane akapuka kona. The consumers need to understand uh, in a case whereby they are being declined credit, why they've been declined credit. That is not the decision of the credit bureaus. The credit bureaus only hold. Um, credit information. Which is given to them. Which is given to them, and um, they are what it's been given to them it's been given to the credit provider remember when you apply for credit um the credit provider must by law check your credit profile one to ensure that um you afford mm. the credit that you you are applying for Credit Bureau Association, you speaking to Selena, how may I help you? Selena Maketa, we Credit Bureau Association. We met about thing about the members of the Credit Bureau. What is Credit Bureau? The Kusela Mashishi, the Kubano Batata Matiala Kotwa, the Nganzi Alayo Kupata Ala. What is Matasha Wambi? What is Kandi Umtu? We say Credit Bureau Kotwa, what is Pata La Dala Ijala? It is important for AMA consumers to always check their credit reports because first they are entitled to it for free once a year and again because there's a lot of things that can happen, um, things related to fraud, 
say in case you have been a victim of ID impersonation. So go by legile uguti noma umtengi aga funi iskolete a cheke i credit profile yake nema credit bureau. Umteto la logbolis and malu no noga kulu. What you umting or post in cloud and by nyang and je any kufunga segun what is miyam as a credit bureau. About tengi, about my son in a loan door. Some people they just blacklist you within just a one month period after you're not paying your account and they just call you and they tell that you're going to be blacklisted without even telling you anything. Like, you know, giving you advice or showing you, giving you a highlight and telling you that, okay, fine, to stop you from being blacklisted, you can do this. Give us an advance first before you can do that. The Great Bureau Association, it is not going to be able to do this. It is not going to be able to do this. It is not going to be able to do this. Are you credit bureau in Bangla Oko? Koko in Jela Abewa Patanga or Machala Ake. Ubaum do Nimi Booza Malono Sosa going to Kaka is the fun and the Machala at Shalog Dala. We are Kutas Ogba, a booze you credit bureau. Uneto, we are going to find a smarter. We slam daughter, you don't get a laco. Sebong Mugel and Lumbigo, a suit for a long movie, Salam Toto, Guvagabandi, a good see, and my credit bureaus, a Sabenda Ganjana, some Mugel, a credit ombudsman, Niki Lala Mohan, Ganyagena, Alison McGrath, Lovella, a credit bureau association. Lady and gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank right, you I'm having going to start with you. Now, the name credit bureau does not inspire positive vibes. Why? Why is that? I think traditionally, people have seen it as a place where bad information is held. But actually, it's the place where good information is held as well. So if you are paying your accounts well, you're paying them every month, and you're paying them on time, you will actually build a really good profile. So that if you go and apply for credit, somebody looking, a credit provider looking at your credit record, and they're obliged to do so, will then look to see that you're actually a credit worthy person and can easily obtain credit, provided you can afford it. So there's a really big part of the credit bureau that is a positive, not a negative. Okay. And what's the primary role, Nikki, of uh, credit bureaus? Hi, Simpu, and hello to the viewers. The primary role of credit bureaus is to be the recipient of all behaviour of consumers in regard to their activities. So it's a database holding the manner in which you conduct your respective accounts, how you pay, when you miss, etc. So the credit bureau is there to be a reference check. It's not one that will say, yes, credit must be granted, must not be granted. It is purely a bureau, a data capture place, where in South Africa we have 23 million active consumers. Mm -hmm. All of their details in regard to their credit transactions are hosted on that bureau. So it is not them that makes the decision to grant the credit or not. Mm -hmm. It is up to the credit provider to... And in terms of the National Credit Act, you've got to reference the Bureau to see whether the person um, has a proper record and can aff afford the loan that you're taking. So in South Africa, one of the most important reasons, apart from the positive aspects of the Bureau, it is there for affordability assessments okay. in terms of the National Credit Act. You are, must go to the Bureau to check a person's credit history before you grant credit. So it's the creditors and the lenders who provide my credit information to the credit bureaus? Absolutely. So the Bureau is purely a, a, a recipient of information from everybody that uses and accesses the Bureau. So in South Africa, you have banks that access the Bureau. You have motor, um, um, motor vehicle sellers. You have furniture. You have read everything that is sold on credit and where there is a link to the Bureau. Those people put that information on the Bureau. So to a large extent, the credit Bureau is a dumb base, just receiving information from the credit providers. So the credit provider is the one that sends a file to the Bureau okay. on SIMPUS credit history. And that is just logged on the Bureau. So it is a retention place. But it's, it becomes a bit unfair when the consumer is not alerted of the fact that his or her information is being sent to the credit bureaus, isn't it? You want me to come in there? Yeah you, can, yeah, you can. You can wait on that. Um, in terms of the National Credit Act, consent is very, very important. You, when you apply for credit, one of the things that you're signing, they ask you the question, do you consent that we may access your details on the credit bureau? And 
Importantly, when you are placed on the Bureau, the credit provider prior to you placing you on the Bureau must send a letter to you informing you that due to your non-payment, I'm going to be putting you on the Bureau. It's a must. It's mandatory. Is it a threat though? It's not a threat. It's there for you to act in the event that you don't know about it. You can't say I didn't know about it. You must, you haven't paid three months in a row. The credit provider will send you a letter Due to your failure to pay in three months, mm -hmm. I'm now going to be placing you on, on, on a credit bureau. So you have notification. So, and that's mandatory. It's law. Okay. So how did credit bureaus come about historically? What was the inspiration behind uh, the establishment? Credit bureaus are really there to help the whole of the credit industry to be able to provide credit in a responsible manner. I don't know just meeting you face to face if what you're telling me is correct. So you fill in a form and you say, I earn X, um, these are my expenses, these are my other loans. How do I know if that information is correct? So first of all, now you have to provide a pay slip you, and I as a credit provider have to go and check your credit record to see all your payments and verify A, that you have them or what you have, and B, if you're paying them correctly and on time. Mm -hmm. And if you're doing that, it's a very positive record of your behavior as a, as a borrower. So I, as a lender, provided you can afford the credit, will be happy then to lend you more money. So if I'm listed at the credit bureaus, should I be alarmed? Is there a so reason listing to be concerned? The, let's just look at the two how listing is generally used is a bad word. So it's used as a default listing rather than just every single time you go and take credit. Your name is reflected and your account is actually placed on the credit bureau. A listing that, that is normally referred to is a default listing where you have not paid your accounts, where you've been advised that you have not not paid your accounts, and a default is listed on the Bureau. So that's the term that everybody uses when referring to a listing. But actually, you're already on the Credit Bureau. Yeah. Whether it's bad, it, it, it's normally good, until you have a default listing. There are also listings of judgments, yeah. listing of anything, any other behavior that may contribute negatively. But for anyone who is actually paying their accounts on time and meeting all their obligations, the information on the credit bureau is very positive. So there is a difference between being listed and being blacklisted. But then consumers use those <laughs> words interchangeably and uh, not necessarily so. Uh, correctly so. Uh, but let's just take a, a classic example of where you don't have a credit bureau history that will be to your disadvantage. You're a college student, you've graduated with your degree, you're out in the world, you're earning an income. You've never taken credit at all. Okay. But you want to acquire an asset like a home, which is a big asset. You go and apply for, to the bank for that loan. The bank would probably turn you down. Yeah. You know why? Because you have no credit history. They don't know your propensity to pay as you go forward. So they don't know what kind of risk you are. So you are advised then to go and open up a clothing account, build up a little profile, show that you have the propensity to meet your obligations when it's due. You will then get the bond. So that's the disadvantage where you are clean, you've got everything, you okay. want the bond, but you won't get it. All right. Hi, as I put my set to you, I'm going to go to my head. Now, Nikki, I'm going to uh, ask you, I'm going to engage you on this. Before we went to the ad break, you were suggesting that for you to, for a consumer to be granted credit, he or she needs to have a credit history. So if that person does not have a credit history, on what grounds or what are the factors that the lenders or the creditors consider before granting such credit? Well, they consider your salary, whether you know how long you're employed. Uh, but the important factor is that um, when you have a credit history, you're in a better position to negotiate. So without a credit history, you may be asked to place a bigger deposit for a purchase of a house or a car.
Okay. Whereas if you had a credit history, they'd know what's your propensity to pay, and you could negotiate the rate. Um, okay. one, what people forget in South Africa is that a good credit history gives you the ability to negotiate with your credit provider. Right. If you go there and you want a loan and they're giving you this, you can tell them, I'm shopping around. I'm going elsewhere to find a better loan. And Simpiwe, when it comes to unsecured lending, etc., a 0.5% difference in a repayment of a loan makes a big difference to the overall sum. So if you're saving 1% because of your credit history, you're in a much better position. So at what point does my relationship start with a credit bureau? Should I default? You already, you, the moment when you're talking about defaulting, it means you already have a credit history because you've already started paying a loan. So from the day you first take that very first credit, your name will be at the bureau and it will reflect and your credit report will reflect every payment that you've ever made. Mm -hmm. So the day that you first default is, is the time that a different reference will be put on the credit bureau. So the credit providers, when looking at your credit profile, will easily be able to see that you've not paid your okay. account. Okay. All right, uh, let's take our callers now. We've got Michael from Cape Town. So, Michael, how are you? Fine, how are you, sir? How can you help you? Uh, I'm fine. Okay, uh, just to speak uh, precisely on today's topic. Uh, you know, uh, three years ago, I, I, I went through a debt review process. Right? However, I consulted with this other law firm, which I did a good background check uh, on them, and they've been doing quite a good job to so far. So what, I, what happened is that I've managed to settle all my, uh, my, my, my credit. So remember, they consolidated all my credit uh, installments into one installment. So uh, right now, all uh, other creditors, they managed to give me the pay-up letters at the end of the settlement. But it's only this other uh, bank. I can mention it on National TV, however. So they are refusing to give me the pay-up letter. And now it's been almost six months I've settled uh, that, uh, that with them. So I don't know what to do right now because already I, I was supposed to have gotten this uh, or cleared my name up to so far. So it's been six months already. And they are telling me about the holding my account up to seven days. So nothing from March this year until this day, they haven't given they haven't responded officially. They are sorry I have to wait for seven days. So I don't know how to do that until now. All right, Michael, thank you so much for your call. Michael there from Cape Town. How would you respond Simply to that? Simply, thank you. That's a typical what we do in our office. Uh, the credit ombuds office helps people to um, if they were unfairly listed on a credit bureau or in regard to non-bank credit. So this is a typical case that we deal with every day. Okay. So what, he, what had happened, Michael was under debt review. Mm -hmm. Michael had paid up his debt. Yeah. So what was supposed to happen was that the creditors, the credit grantor was supposed to give Michael a paid up letter. Now when Michael gets the paid up letter, he goes to the bureau and the bureau clears his name on the basis that he's got a paid up letter. So what Michael should do is contact our offices. Um, we can assist him to, um, he can just send us an SMS at 44786. We'll assist him to get- Please say that number again. 44786. Uh -huh. 786. SMS us. Okay. It's a please call, we call you back. We then will contact his credit providers, ask for all the paid up letters, okay. get the paid up letters, forward it to the bureau, and his name will be cleared. So what is happening here is that he's not getting those paid up letters and that happens every day. Mm -hmm. This is the majority of case that we deal with okay. um, on a daily basis. Right, so you right. need a little coercion to get the paid up letter. Right. Because you've paid up, they don't want to give you the letter or you know, in a sense mess you around, <laughs> which is not on. We then contact the credit provider, we the credit ombud, please provide us with the paid up letter. Okay, and what sort of information do uh, credit bureaus keep? On debt review, so, so generally, uh, generally, generally, yeah. Um, the first thing that it'll have is your name, your surname, your ID number. Credit bureaus pri primarily work on ID numbers. Okay. So when they're trying to match you to the information that they're receiving, the key information is your ID number. There will also be record of your address, your previous addresses, sometimes of your employer, 
and previous employers, and then we get to the credit bits. Okay. So there will be things like inquiries. So if you are looking for credit and you go to five credit providers, all of those credit providers will do an inquiry on the credit bureau in relation to you. So all the credit providers might have the uh, same information on, on the consumer? Yes. Okay. Yes. So uh, I want to engage both of you after yeah. the break on uh, uh, the, the issue of incre incorrect credit that has been uh, you know, offered by the credit bureaus because of similar information. All right, but that's coming up after the break. As I So more of us in Bugel, it's not that for the value. We must see that we're zero one one seven one four six nine one eight. No matter who zero one one seven one four six nine one nine. No matter umbuto umbuto. No matter ubega umbo. No matter too many of us in email. Go consumer at sapc dot co dot za. Is that for the galafu? It's go Facebook. Now go Twitter. We've got another caller on the line. Sina mage biko ula pa ikhe zeden. So umugela mage sabo na. Good day. How are you? I'm all right. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. I would like to get an advice from your guest. Okay. I bought um, some ports in June from one of the companies in South Africa through a salesperson mm -hmm. in one of the, the centers, the shopping centers. At that time, I had another account running with the same company that was ending in June. Okay, So I explained to the consultant that the, 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 the installment would be high for me to afford at the time. And then the guy said to me, it's fine, I can purchase. And then after the first installment, I can call their company to request a decrease on the installment to an amount that I'll be able to afford, right? So I did that, but when I called the company, they said they do not have such an option. Unfortunately, I would have to continue um, with, with the account. It is a 18 months account. So I said, I explained to them what the consultant said at the center, but then they threatened me to say that if I, I, I default on the account, then they will take me to credit bureau. And I did, really did not understand how is that so, because I explained to the salesperson that I cannot afford the ports, but then I, if they decrease the installment, then I'll be able to afford. But then the guy said, it's fine. Once your first installment is gone through, then you can call and make such an arrangement. Mm -hmm. So. I just need an advice because I'm thinking come months and I'm just going to go to the bank and cut them if they're not solving this. I've actually sent them some, some email requesting for us to meet um, ourselves halfway. Okay. So I'm still waiting for their response. So I'm just thinking in a worst case scenario where they come back and say no, unfortunately, I'd have to continue because I'm going to be able to continue. All right, Mrs. Biko, thank you so much for your call. How do you respond to Mrs. Biko? Thank you. Um, from what I'm hearing, it's a direct marketing sale, yeah. so it's not taking place at premises. When it's direct marketing, you have the cool-off period. What it means is that you have the right to return the goods within a certain period of time. That period normally goes from 5 to 30 days. But what I'm hearing is that probably that period, the cooling-off period has passed. So what it means, the cooling-off period, she returns the pots, they don't charge her anything. Mm -hmm. She could have exercised that right if she knew about it. Mm -hmm. But the time has passed now. So what she then needs to do is that there's misrepresentation. The contract was entered into on the basis of misrepresentation. Okay. It was misrepresented to her that she'd be able to reduce the payment after the first installment, when in fact that was not the case. I suggest she contacts our office, again on that number, 44786, we will inquire from the credit provider on what basis did you make this representation. Right, right. And that will point out to them that what you did was a misrepresentation. The consumer must then be put into the situation that it was before the transaction took place. Yeah, all right, all right. I can bugele. That's again, my Facebook message is Lebas Palelo and Agaba Bugeli. Sina Petra Masua, if your credit is already handed to the lawyers, if you pay the amount in full, will they erase your name from the credit bureau? And how do you know? Spuzuzo Shabang, Utsi, then toga five years, U credit, Isa Sebenza, Uti, after five years, we are Sulwa. Utala Iskati, Esinganan, U credit bureau. A pinza Tubega, Atsing Funa Umuz, Goto, Inking Ayam, Utiwa, Nikweleza, 
Nkoleta izinto egugate nga kreta manje ichet ni ukokelega bile guloku islip ni stinile ogo kala nga silatla kwa 2003 manje ngi pizi ni ukokele account egugate nga ivala kwa za kwa baga bile. Twala chablile uti enage the way I understand we are forced to take credit whether we like it or not. But right, how would you respond to some of the messages that have been coming through? I think just first of all a very important thing, uh, change that the NCR made to the NCA is to allow consumers, if they pay up their arrears or their judgments, to be able to have that information that was negative removed from the credit bureau. And that was a really important change made to the NCA, to the National Credit Act. And why does it take long, up to three months and up to a year, for, that, for my name to be cleared after having paid up all my accounts? So l let's say you are six months in arrears and you go and you clear that, that debt. The credit provider is obliged to tell the credit bureau within seven days of you paying up that amount to tell the credit bureau that you have paid up. And the credit bureau will then remove it within seven days. Sometimes that doesn't happen and you have to then go and dispute it. You're, the place to go and dispute it is at the credit bureau. So you'll go along to the credit bureau and you'll say, I've paid up my accounts, I've paid up the six months arrears, I would like this negative information removed. Okay. The credit bureau will then enter a dispute for you. And within 20 days, the credit provider has to respond. If the credit provider has not responded, your arrears will be, pay, will be removed from the Bureau. So there are various mechanisms by which this should be removed, but all in all, it should never take longer than, than 20 days. And 20 what sort of recourse, uh, Nikki, would be available to a consumer if, uh, if his or her name is not cleared within 20 days? Maybe take a step back and look at retention periods as to how long certain information stays on the Bureau. The general average is one year. When it comes to judgments, it's five years, though a judgment is valid for 30 years. Now, in regard to the judgment one, if you pay up the judgment, immediately you can get your name removed from the Bureau without going to court to do a rescission of the judgment application. Okay. Alison is correct in that the National Credit Act, the amendments to the Credit Act, make it easier for you to get your name removed when it comes to judgments. Mm -hmm. Now, the, the, again, when it comes to timelines, you know, we help people, etc. The procedure is you first take up the dispute with the credit provider or the credit bureau. You get a reference number. They have 20 days to resolve the matter. Okay. If within 20 days not resolved, you come to our office, we do a full investigation right. with the determination. All right, Tiger Mugele, the most important thing you should consider, pay your bills in time to avoid yourself, uh, to avoid falling into the strap. Sasa ke shedele fuzi mbugele siya buya unga inzao. We've got Jack on the line from Rustenburg. Yes, yes. Uh, actually, it's Mishak. It's Mishak, not Jack. Mishak, I do beg your pardon. Yeah, I do beg your pardon. Yes. Mishak, welcome. Yes, yeah, thanks. Um, my, my problem here is um, it, it's sort of a question. Um, I was uh, a victim of fraud two times, and uh, uh, among all those times, I managed to, to solve the problem with the um, What really happened? Well, what sort of fraud was that? Okay. Um, first of all, I, I, had, I had one uh, account, and then with uh, one retail store. I don't know if I must mention the, the, the store name. No, you may not and mention then, the name. Just give us the details and not, met, not mention right, names. Okay, yeah. fine. It's fine. And then I wanted to close the account, but immediately I paid off. Immediately I paid off the account. Um, I, I waited for a month or so before I closed it. And then some other people, I don't know from where, they went and took some stuff, clothes and everything. And then I received the call. Uh, they told me that uh, uh, I took about 8,000 
uh, are things. Um, so I'm owing. They suspect a fraud. And to find that, of course, it was a fraud. After I, I submitted um, an affidavit and my ID copy, and then they managed to clear uh, uh, the problem. They managed to clear the, the, the account. But now I was put into, my name was put into credit bureau immediately. I think um, after I've, I've uh, cleared everything, then I had to wait for about three months for my name to be cleared again. Uh, to be put out of credit bureau where I was blacklisted. I couldn't manage to, to buy anything uh, yeah. on credit. And then secondly, it was another uh, pro uh, credit provider whereby I didn't have an account with them, but they managed to open an account uh, on my name and then they managed to take things there. And then I did the very same thing, we cleared it. And then by the time I went to another provider, um, a pro, a provider to find something. I wanted to buy a cell phone on credit. Uh, I couldn't do that because uh, my name was already in a credit bureau. So okay. my question in fact here is, uh, why does it take so quick to be put, to be blacklisted, but it takes uh, some time to be cleared? My name took some time to be cleared. I couldn't buy anything because I was blacklisted. What, why, why is that problem? All right, tell you what, Mishak, I've always been answering myself that question, and uh, I certainly hope that Nikki, our guest today, will help uh, dissect that question. How would you respond to it? Can I just ask one question? Mishak, did you go to the Credit Bureau and report it and ask and, and lodge a dispute saying that that was not your credit record that was uh, listed on the Credit Bureau? Ah, unfortunately, Mishak is gone, but oh, I'm, okay. certainly, I'm certain that he's, uh, he's watching Superior. as we speak. May I, may I come in here? Mm. It's again what we deal with a lot. Case of identity theft. Somebody stole his identity. Mm. Without having his identity, they would not have been able to purchase after that. Okay. So what, is, what happens is that when there's identity theft, somebody takes your ID book, takes out your photo, puts their photo there on, and... Um, misrepresents that you the person which you're not supposed to be. But what has happened here is in South Africa we have the South African Fraud Prevention Services. South African Fraud Prevention Services, what they do is that where your ID is stolen or whatever, it's placed on their database so that anybody else that is trying to use your ID to get credit, it flags immediately. Simpiwe's ID was stolen, he reported it to us. It's on our database. So what the credit provider will do, you may be the genuine person, but they'll ask you for further accreditation to verify that you are that person. So I think he's got his concepts a bit mixed up in that he was not placed on the Bureau. He was placed on South African Fraud Prevention Services database. When you place there and you go and apply for credit, because you're there already, they're going to verify you. You, there's some history to your, your matters. So they'll ask you to bring further identification, mm -hmm. a passport, mm -hmm. a birth certificate, a, a, a affidavit from somebody that knows you. So that delays that process. But it's for his protection. Because once an ID is out there and everybody's opening that, the accounts or getting money on that, then it's to his uh, disadvantage. Mm -hmm. So I think there was a bit of... Um, what he didn't understand is that he's placed on the South African Fraud Prevention Services database, which okay. requires further verification. Okay, but then my understanding of, uh, of his question is that the credit bureaus are so quick to blacklist him, but they take their own time in clearing his name. Just remember, the credit bureaus don't blacklist you. A credit provider puts your name, uh, puts a listing on the bureau. And by law, they have to wait for you to have missed three payments. So they cannot actually do it immediately. They oh. have to check that you've missed three payments. They then have to give you a letter. Meshak is back on the line. Okay. You, do you want to chat to him? Yeah. Meshak? Meshak, are you back? All right. All right. Just one yes, question. I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> just, just one question. Did you actually report your matter to the credit bureau or to anyone else? Uh, I went to the police station, in fact. Uh, to report that uh, um, 
my information has been used incorrectly. And unfortunately, the police station could not help me. They said I must go to home affairs. I went to home affairs and I changed my uh, green ID to a smart ID, which they also told me that it won't help anything. Um, so I start in there. Even now, even now I don't know uh, when am I going to receive another another message saying I've uh, I've took uh, some clothes in some retail stores. Simpiwe, yeah. Mishek, can I please ask you to contact our offices? Uh, send us an SMS, double four seven eight six. Um, we'll pick up this issue for you. You've been a victim of identity fraud. You've been placed on the South African Fraud Prevention Services database. There's just a couple of clearing ups that we need to do. We'll do that on your behalf and solve your issue. What's your office number again? Oh. 44786, SMS us. Okay. It's easier. We call you back. All right. 44786. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank All you, right. Mishak. Thank, thank you so much for a call, Mishak. I certainly hope that you've been assisted. I can believe as a stasel kefle to let Tina Unga Unga in Zao Siabuya Konanya. Unfortunately, our lines are closed, but then uh, you can still watch the show and engage with us on our social media networks, uh, Facebook and Twitter. Now, we talk of sold debts. What exactly is a sold debt and uh, what sort of uh, problems land at the, or, or issues land at the credit bureaus around sold debts? So sold debts are debts generally that are unsold by a credit provider after they've tried to collect it for a period. Let's say you have an account with, um, with one of the retail stores. They've tried to collect it for six months and you, uh, th they've tried to get you to pay for six months. You've, been, you've had a default listed against the credit bureau and now they have to actually provide for that debt in their books. On many occasions, they will at that point think of unselling the, the debt to a debt collector. Mm -hmm. And this comes with many problems for a consumer. A, because consumers don't often know that the debt has been on, unsold. Mm -hmm. But B, often a consumer is then threatened by a debt collector or can be threatened by a debt collector, saying, if you don't pay, I'm going to list you. Yeah. And what the NCR has very recently done is they've published a guideline on unsold debt requiring debt collectors to meet the provisions of the Nas National Credit Act. Okay. And that is all debt collectors have to be credit providers. So they have to go and register with the NCR as a credit provider. Okay. Next of all, they can only list that debt on the credit bureau if they have all the original documents that are required, which is your original credit agreement. What's happened since... So if you've defaulted, if a judgment's been granted against you, etc., the debt collector has to have that information before he can list you on the bureau. So for any consumer who perhaps 10, 15 years ago lost their job for a period and is now being hounded by a debt collector 15 years, 15 years later, you should really look to go and lodge a dispute with a credit bureau if your name has been adversely listed okay. on the credit bureau. It's right. a great tool for consumers. And how do I improve my credit score, Nikki? You improve your credit score by making regular payments, mm -hmm. meeting all your obligations in terms of the credit agreement. Where you're unable to do so, contact the credit provider. Okay. Tell them that this month things are a bit tight. I won't be able to make my full payment. I'll make a half payment, but I'll catch up. Okay. You can only be listed for three non-payment consecutive months. So if you don't pay in three months, that's, when, that, that's the only time that you can be placed on the Bureau. So you can pay for one month, not pay for the other, pay for another, not pay for the other. You won't be on the Bureau. If you miss right. three consecutive right. ones, then there's an obligation to put you on the Bureau. So how to improve? Make sure you pay your, your, your debts regularly in terms of your, your monthly commitment. Talk to your credit providers 
when you are um, um, when you have difficulty, mm. and when you have a big facility, don't use all of it. Okay. Especially your credit card. All right. You have a limit of fifty thousand. If you max that out in the first month, it shows you a bad credit risk yeah. because you're using all of that money. Okay. Those are all the little small things credit providers look for when okay. they grant you credit. And how often should I check my credit report briefly? You can check it once a year for free. You should actually check it if you're going to make a really big credit purchase. So if you would like to buy a house, a car, you know that they're going to check your credit report. Check it just to make sure that everything is in order and check it before you go and apply for credit so that if there is a problem, you can actually dispute it in time. So the credit bureaus are mandated to provide a free credit report or is what? it just complimentary? No, the, they are mandated once a year to provide you with, once every 12 months, to provide you with a free credit report. They will also provide you with credit reports at other times at a small fee. Okay. So let, let's briefly talk about the factors that make up a credit score. What are they? A credit report. Uh, a credit, credit report, report, I beg your pardon. Yeah. So uh, as I think I started saying earlier, you have your name, you have all those details yeah. about yourself. Then you will get inquiries. So if, if any credit provider has done an inquiry on you, those will be logged. Okay. They're held for a certain period according to the regulations. Right. Then you will have your payment profile history, which shows details of each account. Okay. You will also have a section that holds defaults or right. judgments against you. All right, unfortunately, we have to end it there. But then thanks okay. you two uh, for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much for joining us. And thank you uh, to the studio guests for sharing such valuable information with us. Please join us again for yet another live studio discussion next week, Monday. Please note that our repeats will resume on the 31st of August from 10 p.m. to 11 p.m. Thank you so much for joining us. And thank you to the studio guests for sharing such valuable information with us. Please join us again for yet another live studio discussion next week, Monday. Please note that our repeats will resume on the 31st of August from 10 p.m. to 11 p.m. Right here on SAPC One. Mr. Safo Shaw from Miss Mpiengone and the rest of the team. Thank you for watching and goodbye. Hey, 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 hey,